card with the mandala stencil trio set and the matching dies i have them here this is a really cool set and i think it's so fun to create different color combos again kind of like last week we played with the uh moon bay stencil hi shay um this time we're playing with another stencil set it is it's not a trio it's actually has four stencils did i get that right here are all the stencils and the mandala set and it's again another really great set to play with color combos so i'm going to go ahead and turn the camera away from my face and we'll get started on today's card so let me just flip it here it's just gonna take a second it's gonna go black All right, and we'll zoom in a little, maybe zoom out a bit. All right. Oh, we're sideways. Oh, I did it different this time. Is this how I normally do it? No, this is normal. <laughs> I'm so mixed up between Facebook and Instagram. Facebook, it's landscape. Uh, Instagram, it's profile. Ay, ay, ay. So I'm starting to get all mixed up. Okay, but I think this is right. <laughs> Hi! Another hot one today in Arizona, isn't it? What are we up to? Definitely in the hundreds, I'm sure. Okay, so I'm gonna lay out these stencils here. So you can get kind of a look at them. They're pretty cool how they're designed because they have different sections open and they're done pretty cleverly. Very hot, I know, super duper hot. It's like, when will it be fall? When will we have some cooler weather? I'm very anxious. Quad, okay, yeah. Mandala, stencil, quad. <laughs> because there are four. So they are labeled. This one is number three. You can see it up here, mandala. Has a skew and everything. Here's number two. This guy is number one. You can, of course, do them out of order, which is, I might be doing them out of order today too. I kind of just, I usually like to go with the exterior ones first, but we are not going to make one, we're kind of making four mandalas at once. And, um, and then we'll stack them up and create this really dimensional square card because it has a great kind of round or square shape. So I'm gonna start actually kind of backwards, at least backwards how I normally do things. I normally stamp my images first and then die cut them out. But for these mandalas, and I do this sometimes for other shapes, sometimes uh, flowers, just depends on what the image is and how it just sometimes this makes more sense is to die cut it out first and for these mandalas if you're going to do this kind of stacked card or you're going to ink blend on one shape you might find it easier to die cut it first and then ink blend over your die cut with the stencils so that's what i'm actually going to do first so i'm going to go ahead place down my white cardstock and i'm going to die cut all four layers i might not get them all on this or maybe I will, even better. Get them all on here. And I'll run this through. Sometimes I have a hard time lining up some of my stamps with the die, and when that happens, that's not the case here, but when that happens, I do think it's helpful to start with the die cut first. So that might be helpful for you to kind of keep that in your bag of tricks is you can start by die cutting then stamping or die cutting and then um, ink blending with stencils like we are doing here. Okay, move these out of the way. So those are all of our four layers. Oh, you can kind of see how this is gonna stack up. Almost like nesting one layer after the other. And I love how they're all different. They're actually all different shapes. This is almost pretty as is. That's almost pretty, just that simple white, nothing on it. I'm surprised how much I like it just as is. It almost looks like a flower, doesn't it? But of course, we're gonna, we're gonna do some ink blending. 
And let's start with the smallest one. We're gonna sm start small and then go big, I guess. So because I've worked with this, st this uh, stencil and die set before, I know that this stencil here, which is number, where are we? Number three and number two have parts on it that correspond with the smallest one. So I'm gonna line this up, kind of turn it till it gets in the right spot. There we go. I'm looking through the stencil. You can kind of look through. Put a couple pieces of tape down just to hold it in place. And I'm gonna ink blend this starting, I'm gonna do a lot of combos, a lot of kind of gradients. It'll be very subtle, but I think it'll have a big impact in the end. So I'm starting with squeezed lemonade. And I'm just gonna ink blend really quickly right over the front of that. Then I'm gonna move on to my darker shade, which is mustard seed. And I'm gonna to try to get the tips. I might get more than just the tips, but that's okay. All right, and that's done for our first stencil for this little guy here. And I probably should clean this. I'm going to use it again. So let me grab my cloth. My favorite way to clean stencils is place down a cloth, put your stencil on top, and then use a damp chamois to wipe it off. It's the fastest and easiest way I've found to at least clean ink off your stencils. So you might have to do more if you are using like a paste or something. Oops, and this guy flipped over. Now there's a center dot there, so we're gonna go to stencil number two. And kind of line that up. It's kind of scalloped and lines up with the little star spokes that we did earlier. And this time I'm just gonna do lemon or squeeze lemonade, just in the center there. And actually most of this will get covered up with, I'm going to use a enamel dot when we're done, but there's our little first layer done. And it has a very subtle gradation. It's really kind of hard to tell on camera, but a little bit lighter yellow in the center and a little bit darker or warmer yellow on the outside. So now we're gonna move on to the next one. Oh, <laughs> no. Okay. So the next layer, I'm gonna grab my little stack here. Make sure you guys are great. Oh, there we go. Oh, hello from California, Stephanie. Just saw your quote or your message. And this guy is the second layer. So let me look at my stencils. If you're not sure, you know, when you're trying them out, I'm gonna clean this real quick. I'm so worried I'm gonna get, somehow touch this and get ink somewhere where I don't want it. Plus, I do think I need this layer for, nope, we don't, we use this one the third. This is the next one right here. So I'm gonna line this one up. We're on stencil number one. Center it over that die cut. That looks pretty good. I'm just going to use some micro pore tape just to hold that stencil in place. And then we are going to ink blend this starting with mustard seed. And I think this Bondala stencil is pretty cool because there are some opportunities on this and you'll see it when we're all done to add enamel dots we're going to add one right in the center but i was looking at the finished card this morning and i was thinking gosh you could add enamel dots here and here and i just think that would be really fun to even add more dimension to it 
Now we're going to move on to ripe persimmon in orange, and I'm going to ink blend the outer edge of this image here. Go lightly because this is a pretty bold orange. And I don't want to eat up all that yellow, but I do want to create a little gradation. Oops, I got a little heavy handed there, but I think we'll be okay. And I want this to kind of feel like each layer is progressing along the rainbow, kind of going around the color wheel, going outward, kind of with their colors. We will not do the blues though. This is kind of like a, well, it is warm. There we go. Look at how pretty that looks. Let me grab my tweezers so I can pick it up a little bit better. And then we'll grab that first layer just so you can see how it's coming together. So pretty. I love it. That little gradation just adds so much. And I think, so what I was saying before, there's other opportunities to add enamel dots. We're gonna do one right here in the center. But look, wouldn't this be these little spots here? Be great for enamel dots. Hello, Michelle. You made it. Okay, we're gonna wipe everything up a little bit, clean up a little bit here. Again, we're not done with this stencil because we really didn't do this outer ring of images. So we're kind of going back and forth between the stencils here. And this is only really because I am doing them, I'm not starting, I'm, start, I'm doing it over the die cuts. That just, that was the way I found it to be a little bit easier. So we're on, we're already on number three. It is a great set. I think there's so much you could do. Of course, you can play with color combos, which is like one of my most favorite things. But you can also try different um, mediums too. I was tempted to get out my paper glaze and maybe try one section in paper glaze. Maybe like something golden. Maybe we'll do that on, maybe we'll have time for another one. We can try that out, it'd be fun. The only problem is that it takes long to dry so it wouldn't work so great for our main card for today. All right, so this layer has stencil one, which is the one we just used, as well as stencil four. You can kind of see how they go on there. That's how you can just keep trying and laying them down to help you. I could do this one too, but actually I will be doing this one because that shows up a little bit. This one is too big. Kind of goes too far. So we're gonna go, let's start with this one here. Well, let's do it in, let's do it in size order. So this is kind of the smallest ring. Line it up. We're on stencil two right now. I'm just going to line it up. Did I do this one? I did do this one. Okay, we're going to go for it. <laughs> I probably don't need to do this layer. Most of it gets covered, but we'll go for it. And I believe I did this one. Oh, I did it in the orange, right persimmon. This time I'm gonna have to be a little bit careful because there's a little bit of my side showing. Normally you wouldn't have to mask, but I'm gonna do a little bit of masking just cause I'm afraid I'm going to be sloppy. I, I can't be that careful. So I'm gonna just go around the edges and lightly mask. with my scraps of micropore tape I just have laying around because I have a hard time throwing away tape. <laughs> I don't know why. 
It's just so handy to have it ready to go. Again, probably don't even have to do, if you're gonna recreate this card, you don't even have to do this layer, but I'm going to, because a tiny bit of it shows up, just a small amount. All right, we're mostly masked off here. Let's grab one more. Run out of tape. Here we go. All right, there we go. Yeah, right? It's almost broke though. <laughs> it's borderline broke. Don't have to worry about that. I'm gonna ink blend over that, but doesn't matter because that is not going to be seen. It will be covered by the other layers. And honestly, this layer that I'm ink blending right now will most likely not really be seen because of the layer that goes over it, this one, layer number two. Okay, so that's it. Take off all those guys, put them back where they belong, stuck all over my die cutting machine so it looks like a mummy. All right, so got that little layer done. Now let's move back to number one, line this up. Looking through the stencil, trying to line it up with the die cut, I'm trying to get a nice same border around and that looks good and it's really easy to line up it's thank goodness you can look through stencils really somebody did so somebody used micro pour tape for oh i have to see that it would work really well. It looks like something a mummy would have. So here, if I get any of this, I don't really need to do this inner ring here, but if I get any of the candied apple there, it's fine. So now we're moving on to our reds. So we moved away from our orange and yellows, yellow, we started with yellows and moved into an orange, which is ripe persimmon. Now we're moving on to red and then we'll move into pinks. Also could use brushes for this. I'm starting to think brushes, I like brushes better for stencils than I do foam blending tools. There we go. Oh, that red's so pretty. And then this guy here, number four, these teardrop ones are our last section. And they kind of line up to these bumps here. It's just again, looking through the stencil, trying to get it centered. All right, that looks pretty good. And this time we're moving on to Seedless Preserves, which is kind of like a purpley pink. One of my favorites too, I really love this color. All right, and then that one's done. 
And we're actually completely done with that section of the mandala. Woo! I'll have to go look and see who made it. It was Jeannie? Oh. I'll have to go look her up. Because that's a really good idea. <laughs> I didn't think of it. That's really clever. That would have been good for our, like, using our, the challenge we had where we, everybody came up with such great, did you guys see some of the projects that the team, or not just the team, the entrants made for our last challenge, which was, like, using unexpected household items? Everybody came up with such good ideas. Oh, thank you for sending it to me. Yay, I'm going to go check that out. I love that kind of stuff. All right, now we're on to the big guy, the last layer. And we're definitely gonna need number three here, as well as number, what is this guy? Number two, that gets seen a little bit. And I believe, is that it? And this one too, I think even, yeah, a lot, a lot on this one. Let's start with this one here. We'll line this up. There we go. Actually, that one goes, how does this one go? <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out here on my, my reference. Okay, that's how it goes. I had it right the first time. Here we go, tape that one in place. And this layer, I'm gonna go to the pink. I'm gonna do right, or not ripe, picked raspberry. Just ink blend all the openings. Waffle Flower had a, I think we had a I think it was a doily once that you stacked up for lots of, yeah, it was definitely a doily, I remember now. Like doily dies, and I love that set. It's one of our like, I'd say classic waffle flower sets. And this mandala set reminds me a lot of that. They look so pretty when they're all stacked up, very layered. Now we're gonna go, let's do this one. Sure, let's do this one. Line this guy up. Tape it in place. Probably don't even need to do that. I could probably just hold it in place, but just to be safe. This time I'm moving on to Wilted Violet. So now we're, we're, we're in our purples, for sure. And then we actually even get into a tiny bit of blues. Purple and pink's always a beautiful combo. Now to stencil number three. And this one I made it a little bit tricky for myself it lined up here because I want to do two colors on this one stencil. I want one, I want these sort of bead-like, these small circles, one color, and these parts here are a different color. But I think I can do it. I'm going to use Shaded Lilac and Blueprint Sketch. This 
start with shaded lilac. I'm gonna do the, those, this part here. Actually, okay, we'll do that part. <laughs> If I get a little bit on the circle parts, kind of these bead, almost they remind me of like beads or pearls. That doesn't matter because, or it won't ma impact so much because those are gonna be a darker shade. So if I get a little bit of it there, it'll be all right. And then blueprint sketch, just my darker color. This is the one I'm gonna be a little bit more careful. So I'm gonna come in from the top. I think that'll be a little bit easier. There are the top of these like little beads. And if you had those little blending tools or those small blending brushes, I think Ranger makes some small blending tools. Those would be really handy. You of course could always mask off if you wanna to try to do something like this. change my angle okay and that's it very pretty I love that blueprint sketch that adds a nice blue makeup brushes yes those would be really handy yes those tiny ones, I've immediately, when I saw those out, I was like, out on the market, I was like, those tiny brushes are gonna be really handy. <laughs> and this would've been the perfect time for those. I recently ink blended some um, flowers, some flower stencils, and I used those little brushes and they were so handy. Okay, I'm just cleaning all my stencils off to the side here. All right. Let's put it together. Let's see what it looks like. So you can see how I moved from through the color wheel with start with yellow, then to orange, and then red, and then started to get towards the cooler colors with the pink and the purple, then lastly with a little bit of blue with that blueprint sketch. So you can see how it starts to build. And I think that makes it really fun. So you can do that with these stencils. There we go, that's it all layered up. I'll hold it to the camera so you can see. And because it's kind of lighter in the center, it kind of draws your eye in. Now I'm gonna put it on my card kind of like this, but you could definitely turn it and do it more like this. Somebody mentioned, I think in a comment, how this would be a fun snowflake. And I was like, oh, that's a good idea. You could almost, turn this into a snowflake. I think it would definitely, if you did blues, it would definitely read as a snowflake. Sorry, excuse me as I take a drink of water. Okay, so let's turn this into a card and then I'm for sure we have time for another card. So maybe we'll make a snowflake. I have an idea for a shaker card with this set as well, but I do wanna do one, um, mandala without the layers. So you can see what it looks like completely, like you can see how the stencils work on a flat, oh gosh, how do I say this? Um, all the stencil layers work together on one mandala instead of separated like we have it here. So these are all our little layers. Oh, the marble layering, do you think, oops, let me read that. Don't go away. Do you think that could be made as a stencil? Oh, it would be awesome as a stencil. It might even be better as a stencil than it as a stamp. I'll send that suggestion to Nina's way. <laughs> it would probably be, it look different, but I think that's a really interesting idea of making a marble, marbling stencil. I love that idea. That's brilliant. All right, I've already got my card base. So like I said, we're making a square card and I'm doing a kind of a smaller square card. I'm doing four and a quarter by four and a quarter. So 
this would actually fit into your your standard A2 envelopes. No, that's a really good idea, Sharon. I'm going to sh share that with um, uh, Nina, definitely. That's brilliant. So this would actually fit into your square envelope, so you wouldn't have to pay more to, sh to mail this. Of course, it's going to be very dimensional, so that will impact your shipping costs a little bit. But I know square, for some reason, they charge more for square cards. It must be because how they... They're, it must be harder on their processing machines. They must have to do it by hand or I don't know. But this is a kind of a get around. If you do it, if you can fit it into like your regular um, A7 envelopes or A2 envelopes, you can, you don't have, you can avoid the, that extra expense. So it is just four and a quarter by four and a quarter or four and a quarter by eight and a half. That's the dimension and then scored at four and a quarter. And then I have a smaller panel of this cream or off-white cardstock. That's four by four. Just to something to kind of make the, the it pop a little bit more. If I put white on white, it won't pop as much. So I'm gonna place that down first. Grab my tape runner here. to get a good even border. Pretty good. <laughs> good enough. And now we're going to use some foam adhesive to stick our layers on. I'm going to pop this one up too. Doesn't would you wouldn't have to you could put place uh, straight down, but I am going to pop it up. This is a very dimensional card. <laughs> Oops. And start with that biggest layer, of course. Center it again. It could be like this. You know what? I might do it this way just to show you guys something different. Because I've already made one square, so you can see the difference between the two. Oh, you weren't feeling good, Beth. I'm sorry. Oh, migraine. I'm so sorry. Those are the worst. I used to get my, well, I sometimes get migraines. I haven't had one in a while. Very, very grateful that I haven't. And I'd get those optical ones. Oh man. So I feel for you, Beth. My sister still gets pretty bad migraines. Okay, let's put this a little bit more on camera. So we are chugging along here. Centering these in one on top of the other. You can see how they're covering up. So kind of what the inside parts of the lower levels don't matter as much if you're gonna do this kind of stacked look. And our little last guy here. Okay, it goes like that, yeah. There it is. So there's that one. We still have a lots of dimension. I'll show you that real quick, all the dimension on the side. Ooh, it's so pretty. Love it. So easy to do with those stencils too. Grabbing my enamel dots, we gotta do that. That's like kind of the best part. Oh, where are they? Is this it? 
Here you go. You use one of these, JJ. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you. Yeah, easy to mention too. I didn't have to do anything like too hard. <laughs> so I'm gonna grab this nice big yellow enamel dot from JJ's rainbow pack. Oh gosh, I love that, that little detail. And look at that. I love that. It just really makes it polished. And just so you can see the difference of the orientation versus kind of, I don't know how to call this, kind of more snowflake or flower-like and more square-like, both are super pretty. Just so you can see the difference. Love those. Okay, let's make another one. Now I'm one, so now we're gonna go flat. We're not gonna do all the layers. We're not gonna use, we will use the largest die in the end. Maybe, yes, we'll see, I'm not sure. Now we're just gonna use the stencils. Let me grab some cardstock here. Now this is where, when you're starting with this set, Sorry, I'm so thirsty today. When you start with this set, you would probably find it helpful to go on. Hello! Um, you might find it helpful to go onto Waffle Flowers uh, website and see the finished mandala. Like see it completely made and finished. I'll hold up my one here. Though this is a little bit different because it's stacked. But that would help you, that will make it easier to pick your colors because you'll see it completed and you'll know what, you can kind of start picking what section, what color you want for what section. So I have, this is, let's see, this is three, two. Where are we here? One and then four. So there's all the mandalas, stencils. I'm start with this one. And you can even place it down. You can make some pencil marks if you want to. I think that'll line up. Kind of do the corners. You can use those as register marks for every time you place down your stencil. It should be very easy though to line everything up. I'm just debating here if I want to do a different color combo. I do really like this color combo, but maybe we should try blues. Maybe let's try something different. So I like to keep it light and work. Oops, sorry, I'm not on camera. I like to keep it light and get darker. Let me tape it in place. And let me look at my choices here. I might switch to my inks just because those are a little bit easier and quicker for me to get through. Blues, yeah, somebody suggested making this a snowflake and I thought that was a really fun idea. So I'm gonna try to kind of do that. So, let's see, we want, maybe I want some speckled egg. I do really like that color. And that could even go into, let's see, what is speckled difference between speckled egg and tumbled glass? Hmm. Maybe we'll start with tumbled glass and move on to speckled egg. I'm trying to think how many colors. We're gonna use less colors because I don't have as many blues. Blueprint sketch, of course. We'll do Mermaid Lagoon, one of my favorites. Maybe even, I wonder if we should do a, even a little bit of purple. 
Maybe even a little bit of purple. Maybe we'll do some shaded lilac as well. Shaded lilac is kind of almost like a purpley blue anyways. Then we can move on to, okay. That's looking pretty good, huh? I kind of like those colors. I'm gonna take out the speckled egg, I think. And I feel like we need one more color. I'm gonna go to Broken China. All right, that's it. We've got our colors. Let's do this. I'm gonna keep my finished card here as a reference. All right, great. I like them too. I think that's gonna be good. So the very, very center, if you guys remember, the very, very center is this here. So I think I want that to be my tumbled glass. So I'm not gonna do that here, there. But I'm probably gonna do a little tumbled glass here, start out, then a little broken china. I've got six colors and four stencils. <laughs> but it doesn't quite work out like that. We're gonna be doing some blends, essentially. Oops, and I don't wanna start with do want to start out actually I take that back do want to start out with a little bit of tumbled glass all right then we'll move on to excuse me as i take off my other blending things move on to what is this one again broken china This is a beautiful color. And we are getting, or I am getting a little bit of it onto that area that I ink blended the tumble glass, which is totally okay, which is exactly what I want. So it'll add a little bit more variety to this. It won't be just total tumbled glass in the center. Okay, they're done with that. There we go. Now stencil one. Now moving on to stencil two. Kind of line it up. We're gonna adjust it here. That looks better. There we go. So I think I'm gonna go back, still do some um, tumbled glass here. And then for this outer ring, I'm moving on to a brand new color. I'm gonna do Mermaid Lagoon. Which, where did my foam thing go? Oh no. There it is. Get another. And I think we're gonna to have to add a little glitter paste to this when we get to it. <laughs> Because I don't know, snowflakes have to be a little bit sparkly. I gotta be careful here. I don't think I wanna get any ink down there. But I might just end up die cutting this out anyways. So it's probably. Not that big of a deal. That's nice, that's, that's again, another reason. So you can do the dies and stack up the layers and get that really cool dimensional look, but it's nice that you have the dies and you can, you know, just use that largest die and cut it out, your finished mandala. All right. Let's take off that. That's stencil two done. Ooh, I like it so far.
Now on to number three. I'm wondering if I want to do a little of the, I got to figure out what color I want to do there. I'm going to think about that for a minute. So I line this up. It might be nice to bring in some of the purple there. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm on to shaded lilac. And I'm trying to decide. I might do. Shaded lilac here and then then my blueprint sketch. Kind of like how I did it before. I think that's what I'll do. We might have to even grab one more color. Oops, I got that all shaded lilac, but that's okay. The blueprint sketch will cover that up. Here's my blueprint sketch. I didn't mean to do this part the same, but I did do this, this section kind of the same as I did before. <laughs> All right, let's see how we're doing. We only have one more stencil left. All right, it's looking pretty good. And this is the last one here, stencil four. I'm gonna do those blueprint sketch. Then I think I might do that back to, um, what is it? Broken China. All right. Oh, but I haven't done wilted violet yet, have I? Okay, maybe that will be wilted violet. Wilted violet blueprint sketch. And that's it. Okay, back to Blueprint Sketch. Try to be careful here with this one and not get it up here too much. A little bit's okay. So I want that to be the, a different color. I want it to be Wilted Violet. Oops, and I added a little bit too much up there, but we'll, I'm gonna even it out a little bit and do that on all of them. There we go. Now time for Wilted Violet. Oh, here we go. Say, I know I have more blending tool things. Oh man, this is pretty. Wilted well, Violet is a really pretty color and it looks really beautiful over where it laps a little bit with the blueprint sketch. Wow, I've got to remember that. That is a really pretty combo. It's like indigo. Okay. And there it is. Oh, it's very pretty. Very pretty. I love the cool colors. Very pretty. I like that a lot. The only thing I might change is I would have done maybe the, um, so this was Mermaid Lagoon. Maybe I'll do an enamel dot that's Mermaid Lagoon in the center. Kind of bring in that blue. I love it. Should we add some sparkle? What, lay, what part do I want sparkle on? Maybe, maybe two parts? I'm trying to think. Maybe here and there. Okay. 
that happen to be the same stencil? <laughs> I could do it both on the blue. Maybe I'll do that. I think that makes it easier. Yeah, we'll do it that one because that, that makes it easier. It's all on one stencil. Okay, let me clean my stencil real quick and I'll get out my, my glitter paste. One of the best things I ever purchased. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, Wink Estelle would be great. Embossing would be great too. Yep, I'm gonna use, use this. But I could definitely use embossing powder. I just have to make sure I dry it before I, and then reapply like some ink or embossing, um, embossing ink. I'm gonna use my paste. Cause I can do that with stencils, which is nice. So I just lined that back up. And you know what? I'm thinking before I do that, I want to die cut this out because of time with you guys. And if I put the paste on, I'm kind of done with it. So let me die cut this out real quick and then we'll do the paste. So I'm going to line it up. That looks good. Use my tape here just to hold it in place as I run it through. It is so fun to be able to try out new color combos. I haven't tried some of those colors together. And how many did I use? I used, let's see, six colors. Oh yeah, that's right, six colors. I remember saying six, six colors, four layers. And I could have done even more. I just didn't think I had an, another color that I thought worked good, but that doesn't mean I didn't. That just means I didn't think I did. Okay, oh, isn't that so nice? We can cut that out and all of that overblend stuff is gone. Perfectly cut out. Oh, so pretty. It's fun to see it too with all the layers ink blended at once, you know, all the stencil layers. Okay, I need to grab this guy. I probably should be doing this on my mat, but I'm just gonna do it here real quick. I think I can be not so messy. Oops. All right, open this guy up. And where did my tools go? Okay, there. Get a little of my paste out. There. Just start smoothing it over. Oh my gosh. This paste, I'm telling you, it is gorgeous. Wow. I love it so much. Almost done here. I'm trying to avoid the center. I am going to put an enamel dot there. I still want to do that. I didn't get my like cleaning station ready because I didn't think I would, I didn't know I was going to do this or not. <laughs> so we'll have to go run and drop this into the sink real quick. Oh my gosh. Let me dry my hands so I can hold it for you guys. It's so pretty. Oh wow. Come on. Show that sparkle. Oh my gosh. I love it. I love it. Okay, let me throw my stencil in the sink real quick. And we'll finish this up.
Okay, we need an enamel dot for this. What do I have? Make sure we're not shaking. Let's look at that first pack. Oh, I think this might even work. I think there might be something in this one. Yeah. So this again is the JJ's, ah, I'm such a mess right now. This is JJ's rainbow enamel dots. And I think this is exactly what I wanted. It's kind of that Mermaid Lagoon color. Oops. Try to get in the spot, in the right spot here. And not get it on my paste. Woo, that was close. All right. <gasps> That's so pretty. I love it, I love it, I love it. Okay, so what I was thinking I could do with this is actually turn it into a shaker card. But now that I put the glitter paste on it, I don't know if I should. Because you can use, I could use this die and cut out a window and a panel. And this could become a shaker card. Maybe I will still. So let's see if we can put together a shaker card real quick. So we're gonna need a A2, or not A2, we need a four and a quarter by four and a quarter panel. Let me get one here real quick. Let's just trim one real fast. And this look great. This will give this some time to dry. So I think this is a fun kind of way you can use these stencils and dies and make a different kind of card, which is a shaker card. And it's easy. This is an easy shaker card. So I'm gonna cut this real quick to make my base. Again, I'm gonna make a square base. So this is gonna be, it's already cut to four and a quarter. Now I'm gonna cut it to eight and a half. This is the exact same base that I used on the first card or the same measurements. Oh, and I lost my little blade. Here it is. No worries, no worries, Christine. I know I'm going a little bit over. Thank you for joining. But I think we can actually put this together fast. I think you'd be surprised how fast it can come together. Because this is an easy shaker card. So I'm gonna score this real quick. Just make the base. Perfect. Now we need a uh, panel. So I actually am not done with my trimmer. Cut that real quick, four and a quarter. Let's see, how does this fit? Is it a little bit smaller? Because I'm thinking it might be nice to do a little bit smaller. We'll go four by four, actually. First I'll cut it in four and a quarter and then I'll trim it down. So I'm gonna trim this down to four by four. So it's just a little bit smaller than the card front itself. All right, so that's four by four. Just kind of, the, this is the same what we had before, but this was cream on the first card. Now I'm gonna take the die, center it here, and we're gonna make a window Use a tape to hold it in place. Ah, let me cut, let me break this in half. Kind of need to. There we go. I'll run that through. This is all we want, really. We just want that piece. Perfect. 
So now we're going to adhere this onto our card base. I'm going to start by adhering the glitter panel. I'm trying to figure out a way I can do this without touching. <laughs> we'll go like this. I'll add some liquid glue. And I'm gonna grab a little piece of tape just to hold this down. Center that. Put this guy inside. It's nice and centered. And lined up nicely with the what will be our top panel. Now let me remove that. Oops. Didn't push hard enough. Let's see if we can get it back on here. I think we're okay. All right, that's done. Now we just have to pop this up and add our acetate. Grab a piece of acetate. And I do need to cut this down, it's a little too big. Eyeball it here. I could even cut it with my paper trimmer. I think I can eyeball it. <laughs> Famous last words, right? Let's see if we can't do that. Okay. I think I can. Perfect. So now I'll stick this down. Grab a little liquid glue. I don't know, I was losing internet there. Let's build the wall real quick. Grab my foam adhesive. I'm gonna cut long strips and then <clears throat> cut them down. I'll try to cut this in thirds. Let's see if I can do that. <laughs> it is pretty sticky. We got one done. I think it'll be a lot easier if I just use my, which I'm sure you guys are like, yeah, you should just do that. I'm gonna use my smaller phone adhesive. That's a quarter of an inch. Just saved me a lot of trouble. That is a lot easier. And just a couple more to go, and this is actually done. I do have to make sure that this is the well of our shaker, so I do have to make sure there's no gaps. That's pretty easy to do on this one because I'm just going to do like a square. Oh, I'm going to, to, I just remembered a problem. Okay. I'll have to, <laughs> I just made a mistake. I just realized this is smaller than my, we'll have to fix that. 
So this is smaller than the card front. I just remembered that. So I'm gonna have to put another panel on top. I made a mistake. So I'm gonna back to a four and a quarter by four and a quarter panel. So I'll cut that real quick. Just give me a second. There we go. And I think what we can do is just center it and we'll be fine. Should line up. Let's figure out where that die went. Oh, here it is. So I'm just gonna run, cut this, line this up and then cut this. Again, use a couple pieces of tape just to hold it in place. it up like that yeah that looks good can I do it this way we better do it this way I almost wonder maybe we should do it like this this and then this oh that's kind of cool so I'm gonna do this one first <laughs> Then I still get that little border. Now a little bit of glue. To that, stick that right on top. And now we just have to remove the backing on this. And this card is a home stretch. And I think I'm gonna fill it with just some glitter. Just keep it very simple. So I have some glitter here. That's more than enough. This way. stand up to do this. Perfect. Now we've got a shaker card. You could finish it with a little sentiment here on the side. So fun. I should probably seal this a little bit better since some of the glitter is coming out. Very fun. So just another way to use those same dies and stencils, but a totally different kind of look. I mean, well, a totally different card. Basically we made an interactive card. We made a shaker card with some cool colors. Again, this could be, this would be definitely read more as a snowflake if I had it done this way. But, and we'd even got a little bit of that glitter paste in there. Look at that, oh, that glitter paste. Super fun. Okay, and where's our first one? Where's our other one? So this is all those cards. Fun. I'm gonna turn the camera over to my face and we're done. We only went like 15 minutes over to make a shaker card, so not so bad. <laughs> all right. Let's do that. 
All right, guys, thank you for spending your Tuesday with me. I hope you enjoyed playing with that mandala set. We played with the stencils and the matching dies, the mandala stencil quad and the matching dies. And I hope I can see you guys on Friday. We'll be doing a live on Instagram as well. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day and rest of your week. Bye, everybody.